The nation is in the midst of an unprecedented opioid epidemic, with recent CDC estimates reporting that on average, 130 Americans die each day from an opioid overdose. Accidental drug overdose is now the leading cause of death, surpassing car crashes and gun violence. For more insight, let's turn to former associate director at the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy and the vice president of the Institute for Family, Community, and Opportunity at the Heritage Foundation, Charmaine Yost. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Molly. Uh, yes, on this Mother's Day weekend, there are a lot of mothers out there uh, that have been suffering through this epidemic as well as their children. You know, this was a, an enormous effort at the beginning of the Trump administration, and a very important one. It was one that uh, was a big part of the campaign and continues to be as we as we start to watch the presidential races unfold across the country. Uh, can you talk about the beginning of the Trump administration, the effort put into this, and where things are today? Right. Well, I think it's really important to recognize that the president used his bully pulpit to declare this a national public emergency, which really kind of set the tone across the administration. So it's so important with an issue like this that has so many different facets to it, to be sure that we're making public-private partnerships, that we're engaging across the administration horizontally. And you see that happening with this administration. You know, the first lady coming out with making opioid, the opioid crisis part of the Be Best campaign. You, um, Secretary Azar at HHS, Kellyanne mobilizing resources from the West Wing. And the president continuing to beat the drum and talk about it, invest resources in prevention. Um, and then you also have the, the efforts down at the border. It's, I don't think there's enough attention being paid to the fact the president talks about the fact that drug policy goes into border security, but that's a really essential point um, as we move forward and look at mobilizing all the resources for all the different facets of the crisis. And one of the things that can make things so challenging politically as well. I want to take a quick look, just sharing some of these national numbers that we have. Uh, we have just a couple of graphs that talk about really the impact of this overall uh, epidemic as it's gone on. You can see the national drug overdose deaths involving any opioid, how they've climbed uh, here. And, and looking also uh, at the next graph, this is really kind of speaking into the more than 70,000 deaths, 68 percent prescription or illicit opioid drug overdoses in 2017. And there's no indication that we're going to see a dramatic uh, drop for the 2018 numbers, uh, that we're still uh, waiting on official numbers on that. Uh, your, your thoughts on, on how to hit this and begin to get that drop to happen. No, I'm so glad you said that because it's so tempting in a situation like this to try to be optimistic and say, you know, here's a vision and we're moving toward it. And, and it is important to maintain hope that we can move forward positively and we can. But you also have to put that together with being realistic about how difficult it is to tackle something like addiction. And so at the Heritage Foundation, one of the things that we really emphasize is the importance of community. You see it on both sides of this issue. On the one hand, when you look at prevention, one of the key issues that is most important in keeping kids away from drugs is their sense of connection to community. The data is very clear on that. But when you look at the other side, when you're dealing with someone who is already caught in the grips of a very perverse addiction, the thing that is most important and essential is getting the community mobilized to put support um, and um, structures around them that really are the most effective thing in terms of helping them tackle this problem. You know, one of the other issues that comes up when we talk about this, that since the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention published its guidelines, uh, we've seen a number of uh, doctors being concerned about prescribing opioids, right. uh, and, but also for a variety of reasons, not just that, denials of pharm pharmacies denying people's prescription pickup, sure. insurance providers. And what does that mean for someone who has a, you know, chronic pain or a cancer sufferer if they're being challenged and getting medication that they need? I'm so glad you brought this up because this is an essential point about pain management, is that opioids are meant for acute pain and there are other approaches that are better for long-term chronic pain. Look, it's essential to emphasize that most of us have someone in our lives who are dealing with chronic pain and we're so lucky to live in a day and age when we do, when we have different options for addressing that. So we want to emphasize to people who are struggling with chronic pain that there are approaches and solutions out there for them. But sometimes opioids are not the best answer and that when you're dealing with, as you started with 130 people a day dying from, um, from addiction, we have to walk that fine line of addressing that pain but not leading people into having a double problem that they're having to deal with. Charmaine Yost, thank you for talking to thank us you. about this today and keeping this on the forefront. We appreciate it. Thanks.